In a moment, tonight's episode. Have you tried the delicious charbroiled sirloin steak and all for only... of the Living Swamp. Deep in the swampland, a young man stumbles his way blindly, closer and closer to a bubbling patch of black slime known as Devil's Kit. His glazed eyes show no recognition of his father's warning cries in the distance. <laughs> Old man of the swamp, you don't scare me. No, sir. Randy Calhoun is going to pay his respects to Devil's Dip right now. Randy, where are you? They call you cemetery without tombstones, Devil's Dip. But that don't scare me either. Randy, come back here. There she is, bubbling and beautiful in the moonlight. Just a few steps more. Randy, now. you've gone crazy, boy. Get away from that trick. I'm walking right into you with my chin out, Devil's Dip. Let's see you stop me. Randy, stop. Oh, can't move. Oh, my name. Randy, he's gone. My own son swallowed up by devil's tip. Yes, Mr. Cranston? Little Lamar Cranston. My name is Calhoun. Wilma Calhoun. But I don't expect that you remember me. Calhoun? We met three years ago when you cracked the landing case down here. Oh, of course. Yes, now I remember. How are you, Mr. Calhoun? Not so good, I'm afraid, Mr. Cranston. Something terrible is taking place down here on our plantation. So it seems to be the trouble. Well, I know it sounds peculiar, Mr. Cranston, but it's the legend of Limbo Swamp come back. The legend started up again. It'll kill us all if you don't help. What are you talking about? My son was killed by us this evening, devoured by the swamp. What? While running to his rescue, I was held by a paralytic stroke. You're sure you're not letting your imagination get the better of you? The legend has already struck, Mr. Cranston. It will continue to strike until every member of the Calhoun family has been claimed. You've got to help us, Mr. Cranston. You've just got to. I can see what Calhoun meant now. What's that, Mark? This swamp country. Oof. Well, it is pretty depressing, isn't it? <sighs> What did you make of that legend business Calhoun was telling you about, Lamont? Well, as far as I could gather, Margot, a family was being consumed by man-eating swamp. Oh, I'm almost ready to believe anything after being down in this part of the country for a couple of hours. Well, we're almost there, darling. Oh, here's the drive-in road he told me to look for. Well, I see two people on the front porch the swamp hasn't claimed yet. Oh, yes, a young woman, a young man. They look like something out of Gone with the Wind. It's pretty far gone, if you ask me. I don't think we should expect a very stimulating reception. That's you, Don. Thanks. Well, good afternoon. Is uh, this the Calhoun Plantation? Never heard of any other name in these parts. I assume you're Mr. Calhoun's son, Quentin. That's right. This must be your sister, Lucy. Yes. You must be Mr. Cranston. That's right. This is Miss Lane. How do you do? How do you do? I don't think you'll care too much for this patch of land, Cranston. Quentin, is that any way to talk to our guests? Now, take Miss Lane's bag up to her room. Daddy told us you were coming. We've been looking forward to your visit. Thank you. Your father said there was some kind of trouble, Miss Calhoun. Oh, poor old Daddy. He's nearly out of his mind after what happened to Randy last night. Then with his paralysis... Randy's probably the best off of all of us. He don't have to fight the swamp no more. You sound pretty convinced about this swamp legend, Quentin. Don't let me scare you, Quentin. Have a look for yourself. But keep your eyes open when you do. Good heavens, what was that? Daddy. That sounded like Daddy calling. Come on. Go ahead. Just the old boy's damn boogeyman again. This way. He's moved back down the hall here. Randy. Randy, my 
my boy. Daddy, what is it? What happened, Mr. Calvin? Land. He walked out of the swamp. He's come back from the dead. What are you talking about? He sat from the window. And then he walked away into the twilight whistling. <laughs> I'll open the window. There it is. There is someone whistling. Oh, it's Eli. Eli, the hired man. There, you can see him now. Eli? Yes? Did you tap on this window just a minute ago? How could I go tapping on folks' windows, Mr. That was you whistling just now. Ain't no law again whistling, is that? Oh, then it wasn't Randy. Randy didn't really come out of Devil's Dip after all. Oh, it gave me such a turn. Scared me half to death. All right, Eli. Go back to your chores. Yeah. Miss Lane and I just arrived, Mr. Calhoun. Before something else happens, suppose you tell us what this is all about. Oh, oh, Mr. Preston and Miss Lane, I, I didn't realize that you were here. The shock and the excitement of it all, I, I hope you'll forgive me. Of course. Well, if you pardon me, I'll look after dinner. Perhaps you'd better begin at the beginning, Mr. Calhoun. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Well... This whole crazy business started back with an Indian legend centuries ago, Mr. Cranston. And this swamp is a sort of altar of sacrifice? That's right. Yes, I've heard of such legends. What was the basis of sacrifice? And once each century, an entire family, according to the legend, was to be sacrificed. Well, that's fantastic. Is it, my dear? Devil's Dip already has claimed my youngest son, Randy. And the legend says that the youngest should die first. What? Couldn't Randy's death have been an accident? An accident? And I suppose my paralytic stroke was an accident, too? That's very strange, isn't it? The doctor's just left. He wasn't very optimistic. There's been no improvement since last night, Mr. Calvin? You think I'd be confined to this wheelchair if I could get around some other way? Of course not. Well, now that we're here, Mr. Calhoun, what is it you'd like us to do? Anything, Mr. Cranston. Anything in the world... This will keep that cursed swamp from taking another life. Can you say you talked to the doctor yourself, Lamont? Yes, he phoned right after dinner. He can't explain the paralytic stroke either. Calhoun is crippled, there's no question about it. It's fantastic. Hmm. Taking this path towards the cottonwood, you know. Uh, Calhoun tells me Eli, the hired man, lives by himself in a shack down there, Margaret. I think we ought to have a little talk with him. Mm. Oh, here's, here's a shack now, I guess. Hello, Eli. Miss Lane and I just dropped in to pay you a visit. That's all. Eli, do you believe in this swamp legend as strongly as the Calhoun family? Ain't the swamp already grabbed Randy Callow? Isn't it possible that Randy might have had a little, uh, too much to drink that night? Randy was drunk on plenty of nights. But he never headed down with no swamp before. He was drawn down to the swamp. Just as sure as if it had a rope around his neck. He was drawn down. Pulled under. What about Quentin Calhoun, Eli? Could he tell us any more about Randy's death? Quentin's a drinking fool like his kid brother. And we can tell what he'll do next. And Lucy? You keep an eye on her, Mr. Cranston. There's a lot more to her than that sweet-talking front you put down for company. You don't have a very high opinion of the Calhouns. People who live near this swamp don't trust nobody. Least of all, strangers. Margo, the spot folks are the skittish. You know now how Eli feels about the swamp. Now that we're actually in it. Yes, I'm beginning to feel it myself. I still don't see what we're going to learn by pulling through the swamp like this. Maybe nothing, Margo. Then again. Come up. What is it? Something coming straight at me. Oh. Margo, what happened? Oh. Well, only an overhanging branch, but it, it looked like some kind of horrible snake. It's just your imagination. Wait a second. What is it? Oh, there are two people talking, is it? Oh. Right, now we'll stop the back of this. Oh. You said you want to talk to me, Quentin? That's right, Lucy. Well, why in the world did you insist on coming all the way down here? 
just wanted to make sure we were alone. I swear, I don't know what you're driving at, Clinton Calhoun. The legend, Lucy. Legend? What about it? Do you believe in it? Of course I do. Who down here doesn't believe that? Somebody with a tricky mind could use that legend to advantage and maybe wind up with an inheritance. Clint Calhoun, are you suggesting... I'm not suggesting anything, Lucy. I'm just thinking out loud. Thinking how you might come out on top. Maybe I am. We're all going to die in this stinking swamp without getting a nickel of that fortune rotten in the bag. Clint, what do you mean to do? Come along to Devil's Dip and see... Sister Lucy, come along and see. Clinton, come back here. Clinton! Come on, Margaret, let's go. Wait here, Lamar. We're going to tie to the boat. We head over to Devil's Dip. I think we ought to be there when Lucy and Clinton arrive. <laughs> come on, Margaret, we're almost there. I'm doing the best I can, Lamar, but this brush is so thick. Listen. Sounds like Clinton. Help! Just get this branch aside, we can get to it. Hurry, Lamar. That's that. Good Lord, it is Clinton. He's in the quicksand. Good Lamar, we've got to save him. I think it's too late, Mark. Nobody can ever reach Quentin Calhoun now. Back to the shadow after this message from our sponsor. Special day or any day, a meal at the Black Angus is something special. Authentic Western decor, charbroiled meat right off the Black Angus open fires, and reasonable prices all make the Black Angus the perfect place for lunch or dinner. Try the famous charbroiled sirloin steak dinner for only $1.79. You get a crisp, fresh, tossed green salad with Black Angus dressing and hot buttered garlic French bread. Or you may prefer the delicious southern fried chicken dinner. Plump, juicy chicken, surrounded with the specially seasoned black Angus batter and fried till it is crisp and golden. And served with potatoes, salad, and hot garlic bread, it is only $1.49. Visit the black Angus nearest you on Coral Way across from Sears in Coral Gables, on Motel Row, Miami Beach, on Palm Springs Mile in Hialeah, and in South Dade next to Jefferson Stores. Why not make tomorrow a special day for your family? Treat them to a delicious meal at one of the Black Angus restaurants. Black Angus, home of the $1.79 charbroiled sirloin steak dinner. And now, back to tonight's episode of The Shadow. Clinton! Clinton! He's gone, Margaret. It's no use. <laughs> Mark, it's easy to hide. The legend has come to pass. Rotten black pool is alive, Lamar. It's like a crawling evil thing. Margo. Sorry, oh, Two drownings in the swamp. Come on, you're going back to the house and lie down. Lamar, what's it all about? You don't believe that filthy swamp has some weird biology? I doubt it, Margo. You think someone in the family... Lucy, maybe. I definitely do, after that conversation we overheard between Lucy and Quentin. Why should Lucy want to kill her own brother? And if she was responsible for Quentin's death, why did he see her down with Devil's Dip just now? Yes, I'd like to ask Lucy those same questions, Margo. In person. You're going to talk to her? I am, Margo, and fast. You can find your way back to the house from here, can't you? I think so. I'll see you later. After Lucy's had a little chat with the shadow. <laughs> Your brother, didn't you, Lucy? No, Shadow, I didn't. I swear it. 
We talked, and then Clinton asked me to follow him to Devil's Dips. He started walking faster and faster. He got ahead of me. I heard him scream. And when I got up to the dip, Chris and the girl were there, and Clinton was gone on the quicksand. Who else around at the time of the dip? Well, I, I don't know. I thought I heard someone ahead of us when Clinton and I started for Devil's Dips. Did you see this person? There was only moonlight, and the foliage was so thick. But you did get a glimpse, didn't you, Lucy? Who did you see? We looked like... Like... Yes? Like... Eli. I see. All right, Lucy, if you told the truth, you'll be protected from this deadly swamp curse. If not, your punishment will be harsh. Very harsh. <laughs> Mr. Calhoun? Mr. Calhoun, eh? What is it? Come on, Cranston, Mr. Calhoun. I'd like to talk to you. Come in. Come in. The door's open. I'm sorry to disturb you this time of night, sir. It's all right. I couldn't sleep. I've been sitting up in my wheelchair. I'm looking for Eli. I've searched the house. He isn't in the servants' quarters. Have you seen him at all this evening? I saw him go down to the swamp about an hour ago, Mr. Cranston. Go down to the swamp? Do you think Eli has something to do with this swamp curse? Do you, Mr. Cranston? It... It's beginning to look that way. Is Randy gone? Now tonight, Quentin? I'm afraid, Mr. Cranston, that he'll sneak up to my bed some night. Or catch me in my wheelchair. You've got to protect us, Mr. Cranston. You've got to. I'll do the best I can, Mr. Calhoun. The very best. Thank you, Miss Henry. And just as soon as Miss Lane comes downstairs. Miss Lane isn't in the house, Mr. Cranston. What's that? She hasn't been back since she left with you. Hasn't come back? I'm sure of it. And the last time you saw Eli, he was headed for the swamp. Yes, but... I'll see you later, Mr. Calhoun. If anyone wants me, I'll be at Devil's Dip. My fingers are getting deeper and deeper into the swamp. I've lost my sense of direction completely. What's that? Who's there? Who is it? Who? Howdy. Eli. Yeah. Old Eli. <laughs> Surprised to see me down here by Devil's Dip? Yes, I guess I am. I was on my way back to the house. I got lost. Very easy to do with all the willows and the Only the moonlight to guide you. Well, if you're going back to the house, would you show me the way? Yeah, and I'm alone. What did you say? I don't think I'm going back to that. Not just yet, Miss Lane. I see. Well, then, I guess I'll have to find my own way back. You don't want to go back to the house for a while, Miss Lane. But I do. I want to very much. You're not going back yet, Miss Lane. Let me buy it. Oh! I said you're not going back. We don't know nothing about this swamp yet. We don't know about animals that live down here. The ones that slip and crawl through the mud. He got sucked into Devil's Dip just like everything else. Let me go! It draws your Devil's Dip does. Draws you down in its black evil belly. Where you can feel a bubbling slime moving around your ankles. And it creeps up to your waist. Please. And up to your neck. No. And your mouth. No. Higher. Higher. No! Otto! Who's that? Otto, is that you? Oh, the hell no more. What's the matter, Martha? Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. Otto. Mom. What's happened, darling? You lie. I was trying to find my way back. He stopped me. He's mad, Lamont. He's a mad, sadistic killer. Which way did he go? He cut through there, but you'll never find him at this underground. Over there, back to the house. You may be able to nab him. Can you find your way back? Pass right over there. Come on, darling. Now we really do have to move fast. Ah, here we are, Margot. Out in the clearing. Oh, thank heaven. I never want to see another swamp as long as I live. Now, there's the house up ahead. And a very welcome sight. Wait a second. What's the matter? You see what I see coming out of the roof? Smoke. And there are flames. Oh, you monster. Looks like Eli really has gone out of his mind. Help! 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 It's Lucy. We're coming, Lucy. Mr. Carson! Mr. Eli's in the house on fire. He's crazy, man. Out of his mind. Yes. Good Lord. What? Mr. Calhoun, you can see him up there on the window. Oh, be careful. 
Mr. Gresson. You've got to save him. You've got to. Do the best I can, Lucy. You must be not to try and get him out of that burning building alone. I'll have help, Margo. Some very able assistance. Lucy. Gresson. Help me. Get me out of here before I burn alive. Need help, Mr. Calhoun. Who's that? Who spoke? This is the shadow. The voice coming out of the smoke and fire. It's the devil himself. No, Calhoun, not the devil, but someone who seeks justice. I don't know who you are, but you've got to help me. Help a poor old crippled man, please. <laughs> don't ask. Help me. Help me, please. <laughs> Get me out of this wheelchair for the love of heaven. You can't let me die in the flames. Why don't you help yourself, Mr. Calhoun? What do you mean? Why don't you get out of that wheelchair and walk? I can't. I'm paralyzed. I'm helpless, Shadow. You're not paralyzed. You're not helpless, Calhoun. It's only your mind that's crippled. Your rotten, twisted mind that conceived a plan to kill your own family. What are you saying, Shadow? I'm saying you use this fake paralysis to mask your vicious plot to murder. That you allowed Randy to die in the swamp when you could have saved him. That Quentin met the same terrible death and devil's dip at your own hands. That Lucy and Eli were next on your list. That's not true, Shadow. I've no reason to kill my own family. They're not your own family, Calhoun. You're only their stepfather. You were determined to keep your avaricious relatives from getting your money, even if it meant killing to do it. They're lies. All lies. Are they, Calhoun? <laughs> we'll see about that. When the fire gets really close, and the flames start licking around your wheelchair when your lungs fill with searing smoke. All right, Shadow. You win. You win. But you'll never take me. You'll never take me alive. You're my friend, Wendell. I kill you, Mr. Burton. No, you won't. Let me go. Let me go. Your life isn't going to end that dramatically, Mr. Calhoun. Going to come to a very grim conclusion at the state penitentiary. I'm sorry, Lamont. I just don't understand it. You mean to say Calhoun wasn't paralyzed at all? Well, he was paralyzed for a while, but he got over it. Now I am lost. Look, darling. Let's start from the fact that Calhoun was an eccentric old miser who'd secretly wanted to get rid of his greedy relatives for years. So? So, one night, his stepson, Randy, blind drunk, staggered toward the swamp. Calhoun saw him go and could have stopped him, but didn't. He was making a futile effort to run for the boy when he was suddenly struck down in his tracks. He lay there, a paralyzed cripple. Well, what struck him down? His own subconscious, Margo. Oh, now, wait a second. No, it's a fact, Margo, an accepted scientific fact. Calhoun was what... Medicine calls a psychosomatic case. Psychosomatic? Hmm. Oh, yes, I read something about that during the war. Boys who were afraid to go to the front became suddenly and mysteriously crippled. Their subconscious rendered them temporarily helpless as an excuse or alibi for their guilt. I see. But if Calhoun was crippled, how did he push Quentin into the swamp? When Calhoun heard Eli whistling Randy's tune and thought it was Randy back from the dead, the shock broke the psychosomatic condition. And he regained the use of his leg. Right. And that's when he hatched the plan to kill off the rest of the family. As a paralytic, he had a perfect alibi. When did you guess the truth, Lamar? While Calhoun was warning me against Eli, he mentioned Quentin's death in the swamp. Yet he had no way of knowing that his son had died. I would have accused him right then. I hadn't had to get to you at Devil's Dip. Eli was really out of his mind, wasn't he, Mom? At the end, he was, Mom. All the others used the Indian myth for their own greedy, deceitful purposes. Eli really believed in the legend of the living swamp. Uh-huh. 